Hey everybody, it's me, Marco from Analog Things, and today we're going to talk about filters and what they do, and especially about the Lomos Instax Square filters, which I tested. Okay, let's get right into it. There's different filters for lenses or cameras, as you want to say it. And these filters do a bunch of things. Uh, so I don't want to cover all the details, which filter does what, but I want to talk with you about filters in general. What's their technical use, what's their creative use, and what can you do with them? And we just jump right into it. Uh, when I tested the Lomo Instax Square that you maybe saw last week in the video, there are a few filters that, we, that I had to test. I didn't really use all of them. Okay, so the best one for me was the red filter. I really enjoyed taking pictures with this red filter in front of the camera on color film, which is amazing because the color film just comes out duochrome, like a Polaroid Originals duochrome film. And you just have to put that little red filter, this one here, in front of the camera and you get this amazing red image. But there's a lot of other filters with it. There's a ND, like gradient, shoot a, a scenery with some sky, you can put that one in front, darken the sky, there's some blue, orange, yellow, light orange, and at the end we got the star filter. So these are the filters that come with the Instax Square. All these filters have their use, especially some that I really enjoyed using. Um, I did an Instagram story with the question which one did you enjoy more. I put up the picture here, it's like the reddish or the uh, or yellowish image. A lot of people just went for yellow maybe because the red is already so used or a lot of people seen it already. But <coughs> I enjoy the red more honest. <laughs> We're not stuck with Instax Square. There's a ton of different filters for every camera. So as you can see this one makes it a little bit warmer on the image. So you get this light orange one also that's like a little bit stronger than this one from Lomo and it was really useful for me because this little filter in front of the camera which makes me a lot more yellowish. Okay so le let's take a look at these two pictures I took. One with, is with filter and one without filter. I mean it's a really gray day so there's not a lot of difference as you can see, but you can see a little bit of a difference. The one shot with the filter, in my opinion, looks way warmer and gives it that, that warmth that I'm missing on Instax film actually. So I really enjoyed that filter and I'm gonna use it for sure uh, on all my portraits and stuff like that. And then there's the red filter. I really enjoyed using the red filter. So with the red filter we shot this one here, which is a triple exposure and I really love it. And I also took a few other ones. So this is the yellow if you want to see it. This is the red forest. So on this image I posted with, uh, with the, in the woods with yellow and red, it was easy to choose. But now take a comparison at my test shots. Yellow didn't make it too good there. As you can see, it's just a little bit yellowish, but the red really turned out red. So that's really cool. The red really takes out all the rest of the colors and just makes it this dual chrome image. I really enjoyed that one option to use it. With the Loma Instax Square you can use the filters that they have, it's on their shop and I will link it below if you want it. But what if we want to go creative? There's a picture I took a little while back and I took it on my beautiful 180 camera and what I was aiming for is this combination of a red and blue image. And this red and blue image combined to each other. You've seen it for sure, there's, dig there's a lot of digital images combined where you see a red image and a blue image and they are just overlaid. That's easy to achieve in Photoshop. It's just black and white, multiply, put them over each other. Easy as that. But how do you do that on, a, on analog film? You want the blue image and a red image. And you actually want to shoot fast. So I tried a few different versions. First option was I put some color gels in front of my flash and used a, a, a red flash and a blue flash. Turned out okay. Wasn't too bad but not too good. And also it's really uh, hard work or you, you spend a lot of time changing from red to blue red. I want to do that fast so that wasn't an, an option for me. So I built something myself and I built this little slider here. I know it's just cardboard and everything together. A lot of people will be like oh my god you will lose quality and everything. Yeah it's in front of the lens and you can take a look. Can you see how scratched this piece is? I didn't care. Quality is still fine okay. It's in front of the lens, it's far away. This little tool that I use, and it's actually pretty cool, cause you can like just switch pretty fast from one filter to the other filter. Here, blue, red, blue, red. Really enjoyed this one. 
And the image I took with it was amazing. How I did it was just like cut out some circle in the back that fits on my lens of the camera. So this one fits on top of here. And when I was shooting, it was pretty easy. I took the first image, slide over, took the second image, slide back. So I was really fast with shooting and I couldn't, could achieve a really great result with these two colors laying over each other. The image quality was, for me, in my opinion, was the same as with the color gels in front of the flash. So exchanging a filter is also an option on this little things here. So I don't know why, but a few of them got these inserts on the front that you could screw off. So when I got these, some of them were loose, so you have, I tightened them. I don't know if that's the same with the final product, but for me that was the problem. But the good thing is you can also unscrew them if you're not too worried about the quality without using glass and you use some just color gel so you have lying around. You could just unscrew it as I did. So I just unscrewed this ring on top and then you can pop out that glass and put in some other color gels. You just have to trace the lines of this here. So just put some color gel inside and you're ready to you go. So you could put some, some green, you can need some blue, you could go more orange, more red, whatever you want. There is actually no limits in this. You can do multi exposures with different colors lying over each other. It would get a mesh, but, uh, mess at the end, but you can try, just work with it. Try different colors, try different filters. Uh, you're not stuck with filters that you can just screw on. You can also get just like color filters or old filters that you have already like yeah, I got one here. That's actually, what is it? It's a diffuser. So, so I got the diffuser here. Like for example, this one is really big. So I could just hold in front of the lens like this. And now I'm gonna be like, my skin is so soft. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's not, but these filters exist. You don't need to do that digitally or anything. Just try them out. Try to work with it. Be creative. Don't get stuck into one, one thing and just try to do multi exposures with different colors, just try to get out one color in the image more or just combine, make like three images in different colors and combine them to one, stuff like that. You remember the video we did with the cutting of the image? Just remember like taking one picture red, one yellow, one blue and then just mix them up together. Would be an idea, you could try that. Who knows? If you want one of these sets, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's not too expensive for a filter set. I enjoyed using the, the, the hell out of the red filter and I will definitely do a project with it. I already have a concept and everything and a model and I probably... Do you guys want to see a behind the scenes when I shoot with somebody? I mean, I don't know how to do that with YouTube since a lot of my stuff is sensual, boudoir, nude and I don't know how to go with the blank nipples and stuff like that. So I have to figure that out. If you guys know, drop me in the comments below, please. I, I, I have no clue. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you want to see behind the scenes of, of shootings uh, I do, uh, also let me know below in the comments because I have no clue if, if that's interesting. One filter we were going to talk in a special episode is going to be yellow and blue. Yellow and blue are really important to change the color temperature. And color temperature is something really sensitive. On analog, every film has a white balance that it's specifically developed for. These are the options with filters. Try to find some on flea markets, some old ones. They can be bigger, they can be smaller. Like if you think you'll be, you'll be secure enough to hold one in front of the lens and just shoot. So with these cameras as the Instax Square, that has just a lens this size, you can get whatever filter you want, because they will cover that thing. And what you could also use is I know they sell different color gels for the for the flash here, which you put in front on, on top here. But if you have this one and this one, guess what happens? Color filters are amazing and you can get them really cheap because nobody uses them anymore. And just take a look at flea markets, photo buckets, eBay's. You, I just got a bunch like I got filters. I got filters. I got a lot of them. And I paid nothing for them, okay, like really nothing. Sometimes I got them for free from people and yeah. But it's fun to work with them. So keep in mind, don't get stuck on stuff you can buy. Also, you can build stuff yourself, like this one. If it fits the purpose, do it. Never get stuck in, in, in some technical issues or quality issues or something. If you want to achieve something, just go for it. Just try it out. If you have any questions about that, like drop them in the comments below. I'm really happy to talk about creative projects. 
If you're not sure that, that like, or if you don't want to get your ideas too public, you can also write me a direct message on Instagram or on um, here on YouTube. And I, I'm really happy to discuss project ideas or concepts with you guys. Also, don't forget to tag my pictures or uh, not tag, like put the analog syncs tag on Instagram. Okay, that's it for me today. If you liked the video, hit like. If you didn't like, thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Bye!